What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com. And today I am looking ahead to KSW 75, uh, the latest from uh, arguably the biggest promotion uh, over here in Europe. Definitely the, the biggest in uh, in continental Europe, anyway, uh, as they put on another good show here, they have the uh, light heavyweight title on the line and a few other good light heavyweights and other good fighters as well uh, on the card. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run you through it uh, quickly here uh, today. Shout out before I start it all to my good friend Sean Dini. He's absolute expert in European MMA, Eastern European MMA, uh, and KSW especially, and he gave me a hand with this as well, so big shout out to Sean Dini, and check out his uh, preview that he will have out as well over in Severe uh, during the week as well. This is the guy, <laughs> this is the go-to guy, and he's a, a great help to me, great to have a chat with, so I appreciate that. Before I get into this card, you know, uh, when we were talking about KSW, I suppose on this week, we can't not talk about the man, the massive fight that was announced. Uh, Marius Pujanowski versus Mamed Kaladov. Um, two greats, you know. Kaladov been there for years and years in KSW against Pujanowski, the world, uh, the former world's strongest man, uh, who has really kicked on as an MMA fighter over the last few years, you know, when he came into MMA and when strong men come into MMA, usually we're thinking, ah, oh, this is going to be fun, it's, you know, uh, but he's turned into a very, very good fighter. I saw him fight once live in Dublin. I knocked out Mikel Mitterla last time out, uh, which, you know, okay, he's a bit bigger than him, absolutely, but still, to win that fight was absolutely uh, brilliant and he's won other, uh, other big fights as well that I would... Uh, you know, I, I don't. I, you know, he's turned into a guy now who you want to see fight certain guys. If you get me, um, which maybe wasn't the case before. You want to see him fight like legit best guys now, and he's doing that again in there against Kaladov. You know, their biggest star. So that's going to be absolutely huge for them. Uh, that's coming. Up. I think it's towards the end of the year. I, I'll probably I'll probably be up on screen here now. I'm sure John or someone will, sh- uh, will throw it up. But they uh, uh, they squared off the other day and. The excitement levels, just kind of looking at that, were absolutely massive because, you know, it's, it's KSW is a very unique thing. I was actually having a chat with a, a couple of media members the other day uh, about MMA worldwide and how MMA has kind of popped up in certain areas, you know, with the help of big promotions like KSW or like in Asia or One Championship. Or, it, you know, it hasn't popped up in, in uh, the UK and Ireland, but with Cage Warriors, the, the scene that's there, I suppose, and there's different scenes in different places, maybe popping up is the wrong phrase to use there. But none has been as successful as what KSW have done uh, in Poland and Eastern Europe and moving, you know, they, they did a show in Ireland and they did a show in the UK and okay, they haven't uh, come back, but there was, there was maybe other reasons for that as well, but they have done a fantastic job. They have a standalone scene there where guys like Kaladov or Podjanowski or others don't need to leave KSW or, you know, I know they have a couple of sister promotions as well and have down through the years, but they don't need to leave that to have great, fulfilling careers in terms of money but also in terms of stardom and you know uh, achievement because winning a KSW title or having big win- fights in KSW having big wins in KSW means a lot it's always a thing I said with uh, with certain titles whether it was the Cage Warriors title here or the Bama title people call them world titles I actually t- think it took away from them because to be a Cage Warriors champion means something Right, it's a great achie- achievement to call someone the Cage Warriors World Champion. I actually think it takes away because you're comparing them with like the UFC champion then or whatever. And it's like we all know what it is. It's not that, but what it is is great. And KSW, I think, have that in abundance. Like they have just getting a fight in KSW, being a headliner in KSW, being a champion in KSW means something. And uh, I think. This, they've reached well they've, they've always done it but this super fight level now where they have two of those massive stars going up against each other that's going to be absolutely massive so I want to uh, uh, a bit of a chat here to whet the, or whet the appetite as, <laughs> as we go into the next few uh, KSW cards here coming up uh, but the card we have here uh, is a pretty good one too I was talking to, to my guy Sean about it. he was telling me this one um, 
It was supposed to be in, I was in Croatia, it was supposed to be, and then it kind of got moved back, so there's a lot of different Croatian fighters on it. I'd assume they were aiming this to be a Saldic card, maybe, and obviously Saldic went, uh, and he signed for one championship, but it's back in Poland now, uh, so I'm sure there'll be a big crowd there, uh, again, over in the uh, in the amphitheater uh, in uh, <laughs> Noviswatch. Is that, is that right? Novi, did I get it right? Noviswatch? Uh, over in Poland. So the uh, KSW stalwart, Damien, Damien Stasiak uh, is in this, and he's fighting uh, Robert Ruhawa, who's seven and oh. Watched a bit of uh, Ruhala today. Um, and he's a very, very interested sort of fighter. Um, you know what? He, you know he reminds me a, a little bit of Tobias Herrera. I don't know if people know him. He fights in uh, in cage wires, and um, you know he's in in the the uh, one forty five pound mix there in cage wires. I know he's lost his last couple in a row, but he's maybe. You know, and Herrilla is known for kind of walking forward and just non-stop. And Ruhawa is a bit like that, but I think a bit more technical. Um, he's good at range, but he moves inside all the time. Um, c- can grapple as well, 4 and on KSW. You know, I was talking to Sean about it. They, they see him as one of their bright new stars in Poland. He's a local guy as well. Um, and... Uh, it's it's a big test for him here against Damien Stasiak, who you know who was in the UFC and who's been around K, uh, KSW for a long time, black belt and karate, um, and he's a lot of submissions as well. And his record turned into a guy who you know fighting a lot on the ground, great attack in the back, getting rear naked chokes and uh, head and arm chokes and triangles and stuff like that. Very very tough as well. Lost eight times but only finished once. Um, this is the type of fight, I think, where Ruhala will not want to turn it into a back and forth. Um, I think he will try, because of Stasiak on the ground, I think, and because of what he can do, I suppose, on the feet as well, I think Ruhala will try to use his speed here. Like, you, you watch him, and I talked about him being like Karila and that kind of, that forward motion and being able to kind of use it well. The one issue he has with it is he does take shots when he gets inside in that far motion. Now, a lot of fighters, they drown in that. We see that with Harilla all the time. Stesiak is not going to drown. He's not going to drown in that. He's used to it. He's fought enough guys. Now he's enough. Um, you know, he's uh, enough of uh, experience to not do that. So I think he's going to have to kind of try to pick him apart a little bit more, try to be a bit more technical. Uh, and I'm honestly, I'm not sure how, how that'll go for him. This is a big test for O'Hallan. He's eight fight of his career against someone uh, as, um, uh, uh, you know, as experienced as Stasiak. I, I would, you know... I'd probably pick him. I'd probably pick Rahala to win, but I wouldn't be at all uh, sure. And this, this is probably one if I was betting on it, I would, uh, I would avoid. But a really, really interesting fight, and a one where we will see uh, where uh, where he goes after this. A big fight then in the, uh, the heavyweight division, if I'm not mistaken. Martin uh, Martinek, who's ten and three, is taking on Daniel Amelechuk, uh, who uh, obviously we know has been around for a long time, coming up on forty fights now. Had nine fights in the UFC, gone four and five there. Um, fought in ACA as well on a three fight skid at the moment, but you know he's a, he's a good fighter, decent wrestling, uh, but he prefers you know to keep it on the feet. Big knockouts, big power, struggles, kind of going. Uh, you know, long in fights, as you could say, uh, for any fighter, I suppose, in the heavyweight division. Martinek, uh, he's from the Czech Republic, fought in ACA and Octagon as well. Um, he, uh, he striker as well. So if this stays on the feet, it could be, uh, it could be a good one. But in the heavyweight division, uh, you never know. Whoever catches who first, uh, it could be, uh, it could be an early night for any of them. I suppose I mentioned Narcoon and I'll, I'll jump to that fight. Uh, he, uh, you know, and I mentioned the Silva as well. He's fighting the Silva on this card as well. So, it, as I said, it's kind of a maybe a four way tournament here. Maybe one of them lads will end up getting back, uh, getting back into a title shot, especially Narcoon. I suppose if he wins, you know, being the former champ. Um, I was talking to Sean about this and he was kind of saying to me he's not sure why he didn't get the rematch considering they're fighting on the same card considering he was, you know, the champ and he's beaten the lad who's fighting for the title. Um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, it's because he's lost uh, his last two after going up in weight as well. Um, you know, Narcoon is, we know all about him, he's some really good submissions, he's guillotine, strangles your naked chokes and a very good kickboxer as well. Mai Tai uses his knees inside. Um, 
Narcoon, uh, sorry, Enrique even is, as I mentioned, a Brazilian uh, striker who, <laughs> watching that fight against Erslan, he didn't take a backward step, even though he was getting caught over and over and over. And that's the type of guy he was, you know. Um, he's a kill or be killed aggressive fighter. Um, you go you go in there against a guy like Arslan, you go in there against a guy like Johnny Walker uh, in the UFC, and <laughs> it, it'll either go very well for you or very badly for you. And that's, as I said, that's the type of fighter he is. He can grapple, but is he as good as Narcoon on the ground? I wouldn't think so. Um... Narcoon, look, if you were to look at this fight and pick it, you, you would say the advantage would be for Thomas Narcoon on the ground. Uh, Three-round fight for him now. He's used to fighting five-round fights. So it'll be interesting to see the type of pace that he actually fights with. What, like, I think this one is the sort of fight where if Enrique de Silva fights at the pace he likes to fight at, I think he'll either end up kind of getting jabbed up and hit with a big shot or else taken down and maybe submitted or dominated on the ground. I really think he kind of needs to pick his shots better here. Now, there's a fine line there because if you start picking your shots and you f- start fighting a slower pace, Thomas Narcoon is just going to beat you. Like, he is just going to beat you uh, in that fight. So, uh, it's a tricky one. Look, Narcoon is my pick here and he's going to be a big favourite. haven't looked at the betting odds yet, but he'll definitely be big favorite i would say uh coming into this fight and i think he will uh i think he'll probably end up winning it too um the next fight in the card in adam uh Soldayev, uh who's six and one is taking on alexi uh poleshuk uh Soldayev is um a warsaw man fighting out of wca uh hasn't fought that much but he's a very very aggressive striker um very good technical uh, counters, intelligent. Um, I was talking to Sean about him as well, and he said if he can stay fit, he'd be a title uh, a title challenger. Um, yeah, Polishuk is a Ukrainian who's fighting out of Poland. Uh, more of a wrestling kind of guy with submissions, a lot of uh, triangles and, and arm bars. Um, you know, one of those fights where Saldaev will want to keep it standing. Uh, Polishuk will want to get it to the ground. And both of them probably be looking for a finish, so we'll see how it goes. But we'll have to probably be patient as well, looking at uh, that one. Um, so yeah, after that, then we have the six and one Adam Tomisic uh, against the four and zero uh, Madeline uh, Perlescu. Uh, Tomisic one and one in KSW and all rounder solid kickboxer with knockout power, good submissions as well. Um, you know, can get taken down, can struggle on the bottom. Um, Madeline is, is a Romanian, comes from the um, from Heroes, where, funny enough, Kean Cowley uh, fought and, and uh, Lee Hammond uh, as well. Uh, knockout artist, three out of four wins by KO within a minute, uh, and the fourth was within three minutes. So uh, it'll be interesting to think to see this one. I think uh, it has the makings of. Uh, a barn burner and someone's probably getting knocked out here if it's a very good kickboxer with knockout power uh, against uh, a knockout artist who is uh, four and oh so you know we will uh, we'll see how that one goes um then there's an interesting fight Jan Ness uh eight and one uh against Adrian Gralak who is five and oh uh, Lies is uh, a lot of experience in IMAFs, 2 and 0 in KSW, very good grappler, uh, good scrambles, um, you know, takes the back, flashy kickboxer on the feet, will throw some spinning stuff as well and can take a few shots if he's on. Uh, Gralak is, is new, he trains out at WCA gym as well in Warsaw, very good kickboxer with apparently improving wrestling and all of that. Uh, big step up in opposition for him. Um, and it'll be interesting to see, I suppose, who can uh, who can get the better of the of the grappling there if it goes down. But you would think uh, it, it's interesting as well. We see uh, like Lies here with his his IMAF background. I was looking like King Cowley, obviously fighting out of Ireland here. Uh, he's a fight coming up soon. He is a very you know distinguished IMAF background. We look at Mohammed Makayev and I, that name that King Cowley <laughs> just came up to me literally because his fight was announced there last night, but. There's more and more guys coming into more and more promotions with more and more IMAF experience now. And I'm very interested to keep an eye on that, you know, to see how well these guys do, to see how much 
that experience of having, you know, three fights in a week or, uh, you know, representing your country or putting in a kind of a camp to uh, peak for a certain week, you know, how that helps you. Because, you know, MMA, and I'm sure it's the same, it's here in Ireland, but it's the same everywhere else. It's very... Uh, sometimes it's very tough to get fight, not, not necessarily even get fights as an amateur, but to get, you know, notice of a fight as an amateur, or to prepare for it, or do it in a, you know, uh, you know, a certain way that's going to be beneficial for you. Like maybe you'll get an amateur fight against, you know, some unknown guy from some unknown gym, and he's absolutely useless. You take him down and submit him in two seconds. Like, does that really help you? You know, or maybe you go in there, you get a war, you get destroyed by someone who has been doing it for 10 years and you're six months in or something like that. Whereas in the IMAFs, now, it can happen as well, but you, a lot of the countries and Ireland this year didn't have qualifiers to get there. <coughs> and to, once you get there, you know, you're, you're good enough to get there. And, you know, the country's improving, all, all, uh, different countries improve it all the time at different rates and get there and contest themselves against other countries. And it's, it, you know, I, I wonder... It sounds good, and I think it is good, but we'll see, and, and we, I think we have to continue to look at this and assess it and see how well the IMAF structure is uh, um, uh, is working. I know that's kind of a slight tangent here from the, the KSW preview, but with uh, Lies coming in here as well, I think it's um, it's definitely an interesting thing to, uh, to think about and, and talk about as well. As I mentioned before, David Martinek as well against uh, Camille uh, Shredek. Uh, Martinek one and two in KSW's check it trends out of um, Poland uh, in Jamblachowicz's hometown, uh, not far over the border. Uh, taekwondo black belt with a very good grappling knockout power as well. And he's a, a big finisher. Uh, his opponent Camille is a very very good prospect only at two and zero. Oh. Uh, comes out to Armia fight uh, fight night. Apparently great amateur career. Uh, trains in a good gym with crap uh, Krakow gra- gra- grappling Krakow even. Um, apparently he's a very very well rounded. I saw a bit of him, but Sean was telling me as well. Trends with submissions, guillotines, armbars, good kickboxer as well. A big step up though to a guy with nine fights. Um, It'll be interesting to see this fight as well. There's a lot. I, I would say there's a lot of interest and good prospects coming through. Will it be too soon? Will it be just the right time? I suppose we will see uh, in that one. Uh, and the last fight in Petra Katsova against Adriana Kreft. Uh, Katsova, forty year old out of the Czech Republic, uh, was fought in Bellator. Uh, you know, six and four can do a. Not the best fighter in the world, but can do a bit. Um, craft tree, you know, comes from Armia as well. Aggressive striker, very, very good leg kicks and a couple of finishes by a guillotine as well. Uh, so that should be an interesting one to uh, to start the card there. But all in all, I suppose a good card from uh, from KSW here. A lot of up and comers and a big title fight with probably the, the number one contender as well. With a lot of big stuff, I suppose, coming from KSW as well uh, in the foreseeable future. So uh, they always put on an enjoyable card. If you're uh, if you're watching, I think it's on KSW TV. Is it on Fight TV in America? I'm not sure. We'll be able to find out anyway. But um, I'm sure they'll have um, Sherdog. Do you know what? Sherdog.com is a great place. They have an, always have articles like how to watch KSW, how to watch UFC. So check that out in the main <laughs> in the main page. There. I'll get another click out of you yet, lads. So uh, yeah, please do that and uh, check that out. All right, I will leave it there. My name is Sean. And I'll see you all next time.